I'm no professional. Hey, what's up everyone? Johnny Mac from Mac Skates. I've been having people message me about how I screen print boards. So we're putting together a little video to show you how. The last video was how to make a screen. Now we're going to show you how to use that screen. So, check it out. Alright, so what we're doing right now is we're, uh, we're prepping the deck. <clears throat> so I like to sand it with some 220 first. And then uh, we'll go from there. Alright, so now we're going to take it outside. We'll, we'll do some hand sanding to really smooth it out. So what I like to do with my decks is I like a really smooth sand on them so they feel nice to the touch. Um, some people will stop at 220 but I like to go overboard so we're going to use some 600 grit just kind of soften, soften the touch of the board a little extra. This also takes down any of the grain that comes up from Nice little edge, and then look, there's a little spot right there, look, a little more, nice and round. So this is just finished sanding, you know we used a drum sander to, after routing, we used an orbital to get everything even. Now we're using some 600. Get that extra, extra smooth finish. And wipe off the sawdust. So before I screen print, I like to do a little spray paint or dye accents just to kind of make each board one of a kind. DIY spray booth. That's so sick. Didn't always start out this way. Those Rust-Oleum cans work. Lagoon Blue. I'm gonna screen print right there, so I like to have some sort of a background. That's the nose. I put a little dent so I know which is the nose. You don't want to screen print a board upside down. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna gonna try to put some color in here so when we screen print it has like kind of a cool one of a kind background just kind of fog it a little bit blue and those other spots there we go so you see there's some green there's some darker blue there's some lighter blue there's some pink splatters on a pink deck. We'll let that dry and then we'll gloss it. Hey, and we're back. It's <laughs> been drying for about an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do some gloss. You can use any kind of clear coat. Um, a lot of guys prefer not to have any gloss when they screen print. They'll sand it off actually if they're buying blanks. Um, it makes a really nice print when it's a good print. When it's a bad print, you have to go back to the sander and sand off all that stuff. When I'm adding all this paint, that just gums up uh, your sanding disc. Um, it's a it's a nightmare. So I use water-based ink so and a little bit of gloss. So if you gloss it and you make a mistake, you can wipe it off if you do it quickly and do it again. So let's hit it with some gloss. There we go. Put on the drying rack. It's been an hour, right? <laughs> I feel like by now, about. Not even. This is my screen printing jig. It's just made from ramp scraps. I mean, piece of plywood. Whenever we do something to the ramp, we put the scraps on the side yard. They get repurposed. Just some two by fours, some scrap plywood, and some little thin pieces of like veneer to like shim it. Um, you 
can get these hinges on the internet for like 10, 12 bucks. This is skateboard hardware. I just put it through plywood, and then put the plywood down and drilled it down. Draw a center line so you can line up your screens, know that you're on the center of the board. These are just pieces of plastic that were laying around, uh, scraps from something else I was working on. So I do this so then the boards don't get scratched. When I do a top graphic, I don't want the bottom graphic to get scratched up. Go through all that work just to scratch it, it's not cool. Um, these are just little L, L brackets, L, L things. Uh, I don't know, they're like 50 cents, a dollar at the hardware store. I got my jigsaw out and like cut it so I could slide it. So these ones are always loose. These ones I leave in the same spot, tight. So then uh, nothing moves. There's a constant, so it's here up is where the graphic's gonna go. Cut a little hole out right there. And that, the reason for that is the nose of the board can go down in there. So you get a good contact here. And it's also nice when you're done, you can just hang it up, get out of the way. So we should be able to make one of these for like 15 bucks. This is my first attempt at it, this one. And uh, it's not pretty, but it works. And I feel if it's not broken, I'll fix it. I've helped other people make these and theirs look super good, <laughs> which is cool. Like, good job guys. All right, so let's do a one color graphic first and then we'll do a three color graphic. Sound good? In one of these videos, we showed how to make a screen made for skateboards from two by two. If you missed it, go back in the channel and check it out. It's very long, it's very boring, and I did it on an iPhone by myself without any editing software, so it's long, but it's very thorough. But this is it, a little skateboard cut off. So it's got a kickstand. This graphic is uh, JB. He runs a skateboard lessons channel on YouTube. Skateboard lessons, you know, skate park lessons. Yeah, that's right. He runs a channel on YouTube called Skate Park Lessons. You should like and subscribe it. It's awesome, and he's uploading videos every week. It's right here, or no, down here. You click it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Anyways, JB rules, and he's a pro rider for Manic Skates. So what we got here is I put little center marks on the screens. It's really important. That'll help you line it up. So if I look, it looks like this is not fully centered. So we'll just give it a little tap. Center that out a little bit. So let's start by mixing up our ink. I mix some like day glow green with some white. Um, JB likes this on his boards. Um, we affectionately call it glow in the dome because it looks like glow in the dark ink color wise, but it doesn't glow. So it's like a little inside joke. We call it glow in the dome. So I'm going to put a little bit of ink on here. This is water-based ink. Um, there's a lot of different options. Some of the pros use NASDAR. Um, I use Speedball because I'm a caveman. So Speedball is very accessible. Um, you want to try to stick to Speedball acrylic. Um, I was using the textile ink at first and it worked, but it was bleh. So somebody tipped me off to acrylic and it dries fast. So this is called flooding the screen. So we got that on there, right? We got it lined up. You get the squeegee and you pull. All right, and then I try to get ink off the squeegee because uh, it minimizes those drips. So if you're getting those drips, you might have like really liquidy, so liquidy ink. So I'm gonna push, watch my fingers. I'm gonna go above it, I'm gonna push down, and I'm gonna push with all my might. And there you go. Oh look, no drips. <laughs> Sick. Now I'm gonna flood it again after. The reason I'm flooding it again is because after you pull your squeegee, there could be some ink residue left in the screen and, and without a flood of ink between boards, it'll dry. And when it dries and you start pulling it, it'll, it'll look all distorted. So I like to flood the screen so I have the right amount of ink for one and two to keep it from drying in the screen. It's harder to dry, like strength in numbers, right? There's a glob of ink, it's not gonna dry as quick. So here we go. Those are some pretty tight lines. 
for a curved dealy. Right? And then if you go out into the sun, all of that background spray paint that looked like it didn't matter and shouldn't have been there, now makes it look like a two color design. So we're using something simple, a one color screen, to make it look more, more graphic heavy. Other than just white on pink, right? So that's pretty cool. Let's put that on the drying rack. Okay, now we're gonna try that curve squeegee and see. Yeah, I know. I... What's cool is see how I can bend that. So I can really push in those spots where I have a hard time getting good contact. When I don't get good contact, I get the weeps. We might get those weeps here and then I'll have to wipe it off. So push it down. Before I pull, make sure I got all that pressure right there. No weeps. Oh, I spoke too soon. See those? That's the weeps. What, what that means is I was pushing harder on my left hand than on my right hand. Those are not bad. I think I'd mess it up more trying to get rid of them. And my art tends to be scribbly, loose artwork. So it, you can't tell that it's a mistake. Only I would know or the artist. Um, Excel one did this art. It was awesome. Great artist. Book a tattoo with him. Oh, see, look, there's another one. But that's what makes it cool. It's art. It's only wrong because I just pointed at it and said it's wrong. Now it's right. See, it's right. Look at that art. It's cool. Yeah, if any of you guys got any better ideas for ink. So, what I'm doing here is I'm sealing the, sealing the graphic. Bless you. Um, Ooh, thank you. I like to do at least two coats of gloss. So the first coat is pre-screen print, second coat is post-screen print. If it isn't glossy enough to my liking, I'll hit it with third, but usually with one of these, two coats is, is more than enough. Alright, so we got the board finished, it's got the final gloss, it's still kind of wet, like dry to the touch, dry enough to hold, but um, you now we can see the spray paint, and the screen print, and the dyed veneer. So when I made the frames, I put centers on all four, so then when I line up my um, transparencies to develop the screen they're all in a general same era area that way you don't have to adjust things too much when you go from screen to screen so when you print out your transparencies you want targets on all four corners if you if you can and then that way you line them all up into these four corners so when you go screen to screen they're they're closely aligned um, so that's what this is now I have center lines you can match it up on the board so this is screen number one it's a background background color for a three color print. So what we're going to do is line it up make sure it's centered to the best of my ability. I'm going to push down right here. I can see that the edge goes to the edge of the board there. Edge goes to the edge of the board there. The truck holes are right here. I'm going to use the fingers and eyeballs rule. There's four fingers and it looks like a bottle thumb there and a bottle thumb there. My art is usually really loose, so then that way it doesn't look off if it's not perfectly centered. Now, if you're doing something with a perfect rectangle or a circle, perfect circle, you're going to want to make sure you line it really well. Um, I'm not a very good screen printer, so I want to make sure that it's as easy as possible to print it. And so by having loose art with uh, lots of overlap from color to color, they don't have to be perfect, so if there's a little overlap, it, it tightens it up and like kind of boxes it in. It looks good. So we're gonna do the first color right here. Is that again? I have a feeling because I'm doing that. <laughs> we'll have uh, an example of what happens when you screw. They don't like doing that. All right, so flooding the screen. Here we 
go. Make sure you don't drop any glops of ink on the stencil. It'll come through and it won't look very good. Luckily that was on the outside of the stencil, so we're okay. Now again, we're gonna use our fingers. You're gonna get messy, so a damp towel for your hands in between boards so you don't get thumbprints of ink on your board is helpful. Um, but I'm gonna put push with all my might and I'm gonna try to bend this rubber into the concave so I don't get those weeps. Almost put my weep. Okay, here we go. There's a weep. However, zoom in on that. It's very small. I lick my thumb and I just rub it a little bit. What weep? There. And we're gonna screens flooded, fingers on the concave area, slight angle. And I put my body weight on it. No weep. So what happened was the screen broke in a little bit from that first one. Um, what I used to do when I was first starting to do this. I get newspaper and I put the newspaper down on the board and pull a few. So if you are just doing one board and you don't want to wait, um, you can use a heat gun to dry this ink. Avoid it. I'm trying not to add or introduce heat to my board, so I'm going to go low setting. It's almost like a blow dryer. Just, you know, keep it moving. Again, normally I do it the amount of boards where it's not going to matter. It's going to dry by the time I'm done with the last board. But just so uh, you at home can learn how to do this if you're just doing a board or a few boards and you want to move on to the next screen. Just hit it with some heat gun. A common question I get is how do you line up your, your screens and your different colors? Well, like I said earlier, I have loose art with lots of overlap. So you don't have to be dead on. But I grab the first color transparency and lay it on top of the first color. You can see I forgot to take it off the board one of the times. <laughs> so after I lined up the screen, I pulled the squeegee and that's obviously color two right there on top of the transparency. That's a big oops. So it doesn't matter for what we're about to do. It might actually help. So what I'm doing is I'm lining up this and what you'll find is the ink goes a little bit past this because when you're stretching the screen when you're pulling it stretches out the image a little so instead of trying to go hard to one side you'll see there's a lot hanging over there even though this is lined up perfectly so what I try to do is kind of split the difference right so there's a little bit of white coming through a little bit of white coming through a little bit up there looks like I can give this a nudge up but again the, the art is designed purposely to overlap because we're not printing on a flat t-shirt where the registration needs to be tighter. We don't have micro registration to dial things when we have two clamps. So if you're going to do multicolor and you're new to this, my suggestion is keep the art simple as far as the detail. Lots of, lots of overlap and thick, thick lines. Especially if you're developing it in the sun like I do. Alright, let's get the other screen. This is color number two. And you may not be able to see it, but there's like a part of the target. It's a little line. And there's a little line. I can see them because I'm really close and I'm not on YouTube watching this. But what I'm gonna do is line this up by finding that line. And it is not. The black line is now on the black line. See this? There's a very small black line that it's hard to see. Now I'm pushing the transparency up. That's lined up on that side. And there's another line right there. And then I come over here, and I want to try to center to make sure that that gap to that gap is somewhat similar to that gap. And then do it again over here. So a lot of it is eyeballing loose art. 
Lots of overlap. I can't stress that enough, man. I'm getting a lot of your breathing. Fuck! Damn it. Shoot. Shoot. Hit all the swear words. Dang. Try going over there. Get, get, far, get far away from me. My breath is so... I don't know why I breathe so well. It's the hardest part. I'm a liability on set. <laughs> Magenta. Now this stuff's kind of watery. This is this is what I was referring to earlier. I get lots of runs on this stuff, and uh, I usually leave the runs on the second color. You can't really wipe it unless it's really really bad. And I try to clean it up the best I can. But if you look closely at a lot of a lot of our boards, you'll see the screen print mistakes by. I, th I like to think that it adds character, and it shows that it was screen printed. Um, so, I'm going to do the flat squeegee again. We're going to flood the screen. I'm going to get some excess off. I'm going to push the screen in. Is that wet? Oh, you know what that was? Dude, the squeegee's still wet from when I cleaned it. Huh. Well, we can try giving it another pull. But before I do that, I want to dry this area first. Let's see if we can get a better, better pull this time. And we got a drip. So I fixed one problem and I created a new one. That's all right. I'm just gonna lick my thumb a little bit and fingertip. I could put the other transparency down on this to line up the screen, but um, I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it. So I see, I know my art enough to know where it's gonna end up. So it's, you can see the pink under this. It's not lined up too well, so just give it a tap. There we go. See how it's kind of like a little Wu-Tang thing over there. And then over here, that looks good. The TNT for ACDC. TNT. Line that up. That looks good. Let's go back to the eyes. Those look good. Let's go down to the lettering. That looks good. There's that flooding, that overlap. See that pink, that smeared? We're going to probably get most of it if not all of it and then tighten it down and after you tighten it it can still move a little bit from tightening so then just go back and check again and I see that this could probably use a pop there we go TNT how's that look we could that a pop nope wrong way pop pop nope pop pop tighten it again and the letters that looks good over there. You see how that's hard to push down? That's why I get those weeps right here. So what I do sometimes too is I'll kind of try to stretch the mesh in those problem areas with my knuckles. Kind of stretch it out. So. And then just smear it across to get full coverage. And I think I'm gonna use the flat squeegee on this because I have more experience with the flat squeegee. I love that round squeegee, but so far today, the flat squeegee has not ran like the rounded squeegee. And it's just different every day. Every time you pick up one of these squeegees, at least for me, it's like a completely different day. So some nights I'll keep pulling and pulling and just destroying my prints. And I just gotta put it down, go inside and do something else, try it again the next day. Then the next day it's like, it didn't even happen. Again, with this water-based ink, you can wash it off. And if you're really paranoid, you can gloss between colors. I've never done it, but I've heard of people doing it. So if you're really freaked out, gloss between colors so you can wipe off the other color without taking the other colors down. So we got the flood. We gotta make sure we get our finger placement. So I'm gonna try to push down the hardest on these edges. So I wanna line up my fingers kind of in that area. Push, make sure I push before I pull. So I'm pushing down. And 
All right, so look at that. The last pull tightened up all my mistakes. The last pull was good. There's no running, there's no drips from that last pull. And everything that looked kind of weird, some of that, that drip right there, we fixed that. That drip right there, we pretty much fixed it. You can see a little pink coming through there. But in the grand scheme of things, after you gloss it, um, you won't even notice it. There's a little drip coming through right there, that pink drip. But it's art, man. Don't be so hard on yourself, it's all good. People will be stoked because they could tell it was screen printed, not a heat transfer. Screen, make sure that when you flood, it filled every spot. Sometimes I don't check and I'm just in a hurry or just tired from doing so many boards and I'll forget and it missed that area. I'll pull up the screen, it's missing part of the, the image. You can just pull it again. So here we go. I want my fingers wherever this is gonna line up. The, the concave there, the concave there. I'm gonna tilt it. I'm gonna push as hard as I possibly can because I'm weak. And see if I got it without, and it's always like opening a Christmas present. Okay, so you can see that I obviously pulled too hard on the right side because it pulled the stencil off to the right. You'll see the pink coming through there. You'll see the white and coming in through there because I put too much weight on my right hand. So don't do that. It's all good, man. I'm going to gloss it. It's art. It's cool. No one's going to trip. I'm going to say the finish thing. Hold it up. That looks great. So. And I just drop it back in here. And I use this again. Up graphic, I put it back in the kitchen sink. So I got this holding the screen from moving left to right. And then come over here. And I'm gonna kinda pat it a little bit. Flood the screen. See I missed. So let's try again. There we go. And I try to get the extra off so I don't get too much flood. Snap it into place. Go to the edge. You can also um, if you start before the board, you're pulling the screen back to you and when you start pushing, it'll pull it back to this way so it'll smudge the graphic. So what I do is I pivot the corner of the squeegee over and pull it onto the board. So we'll go over here and I use my fingers to push it into the concrete. There you go. It's a little darker than I would have liked. Maybe I could hit it again with some white. Do the, the blackish gray. Try to get more white on the screen this time because I don't like how that came out. That looks kind of and pull and then curve off the edge. There we go. There's a little bit of a smudge in there, but whatever. It's screen printing, man. But we have the luxury of time being craft makers. So here's the other three color graphic we did. That's the top of it. There's the bottom. Spray paint comes out cool. Makes it one of a kind. No two sprays are the same, right? Alright everyone, that's it. That's all we got. Thanks for watching. Keep checking back for more videos about how to make skateboards and how to uh, finish skateboards and anything homemade skateboard related. Uh, check us out on Instagram. Check us out on Facebook, at Manic Skates. Like and subscribe. Questions in the comments. We're always happy to hear from you guys and give you any tips if we can help. But uh, we are not the authority on this stuff, but we do it and so we're sharing how we do it. Thank you.